Hello and welcome to Property Matters. I'm Stephen Galpin and today we're going to be looking at the subject of solar energy. And I'm very fortunate today I have two young ladies with me, uh, Wen Yan Shah, Marketing Director, and Emma Dutton, who is uh, the installation expert, shall we say, is that right? Um, of Solax Power UK. Solax Power are one of the biggest uh, companies in the UK providing both solar panels and all the peripheral equipment that goes with it. So we're going to have quite an, a technical conversation and we're going to run this over two programmes because we have a lot of ground to cover. So welcome, ladies. Thank you. Now, um, the first thing I want to do is, is sort of simplify the conversation a little bit. And we are um, we're, we're talking about solar energy and we all know that the simplest way of getting this is you put some panels on your roof and it, it catches the sun and turns itself into energy one way or another. But I want to just look at that journey and how that power is actually evolved. So when we're putting these uh, solar panels onto a roof, and let's first of all talk about residential properties, are there any structural needs that are, are, are required? Would I have to change my roof in any way? Would I have to add reinforcement of any kind? When you've got a property, the best thing to do is have make sure that your roof is suitable to have the solar panels fitted in the first place. So maybe have a structural survey done. If your roof is coming to the end of its life, maybe if you have had your house for 30, 40 years, then your tiles might need replacing. So there's a consideration there to what type of mounting system that you'd put your solar panels on. So if your tiles needed replacing, I'd personally go down the route of having an in-roof system to have the solar panels on. If I've got a newish roof, a newish property, then have rails put on and have the solar panels mounted onto the, onto the rails of the property. Right, so, so you're adding supplemental rails on the outside of your tiling or whatever yes. it, whatever it is, okay. And are, the, are these panels particularly heavy? Do you need reinforcement of any kind? So the panels, we don't actually make, make the panels our, ourselves. Uh, we work with, all man, panel manufacturers will work with our equipment. So um, the panels are usually one and a half metres by a metre long. Obviously, they, they'll range different panels will range. Um, they don't need reinforcement to the panel. The, the panels will sit on the rails that go onto your property or in the mounting system. If you were going to have a route in mount system, then they'd fit into there. Okay. And um, I, I, I suppose on a, on a count of one to 10, is, it, is this a particularly disruptive process that I'd have to go through? Would, would, would my living be disturbed terribly? Not necessarily. If you go down the route of having a, a, a good installer, obviously do your homework and pick a good installer, then usually the process of having the panels put on your roof can take anywhere from a day to two days, depending on the amount of panels you're having done and what type of roofing system that you're going to put the panels on. Okay. Just while we're on the subject of panels, um, when, you, when, when people are buying these panels or thinking of going sort of solar for the first time, what are the questions that you get asked? What, what's the biggest point of resistance? Um, they worry about the technology, how long these panels last and cost. Um, like you asked before, how long would it take for them to get installed? How disruptive to their life? So for example, my house, we had our panel put on in February, only took less than a day. Oh, God. You were probably getting a special job though, given that you... <laughs> <laughs> well, our house is relevantly new, only about 10 years. So the roof, you know, everything's they, not much work need to be done. So okay. if you're looking, you know, if I've got new properties, really half a day, almost a day would be mm -hmm. done. Yeah, mo most days now, these properties are built for catering for, you know, put solar panels on now. If, if you look at, you know, these new development, I think part of the government incentive is to encourage developers to install solar panels now as well. Okay, and, and um, two, two things I want to ask you on, on the basis of what you just said. You did mention the life of the panels. What, what sort of life would you expect from a... Uh, for panels, usually about 25 years now. Right, Yeah. okay. So, I mean, that, that's, um, that's quite a considerable time and, and, and it, it is plenty of time. 
to try and recoup your capital cost, I suppose. So that, that, that's, that's quite good to know. Yeah, also people worry about, you know, if they're moving house, whether that devalued their house. Actually, now it's not. Because you put these equipment in your property now, you, incre uh, you improve your EPC rating, so mm. which adds sure. a value to your property Absolutely. if you do sell yeah. your property, yeah. And, and the other point is, you, you mentioned uh, developers. Now, I, I, I've been in property development one way or another for well, it seems like a hundred years now. But anyway, um, developers are not known for being uh, very entrepreneurial when it comes to new materials, new technologies, new ideas. How much of a resistance do you get if your distributors try and sell into a developer to include uh, uh, um, solar panels in, in, in their construction. Do, do you find a resistance? Do you? Um, these days I don't find um, so much resistance because a lot of uh, incentive from the government, for example, I mentioned earlier about the EPC rating mm. and also you know tax benefits. At the moment there's no VAT for panels and batteries, storage and anything related to solar products. So I presume that that's a 20% saving really, isn't it? Yeah, really? for, and for home users, definitely, yeah, yeah a big that. saving. That's good to know. And um, com coming back to you, Emma, do you think that um, developers are, shall we say, competent enough to include this sort of technology? Or do you have to spend a lot of time with them to show them how the installations work and what they need not to... Not so much the developers, well, not so much the developers, developers as such. I do think they probably need a little bit more education maybe around the, around the equipment and what it can do and how it can benefit the homeowner. A lot of developers will put the, like, for a minimum of two solar panels on and an inverter to convert the energy into the properties to, for the homeowner to use that energy. However, if they used, maybe put more solar panels on, offered the homeowner an option to buy more solar panels to generate more energy to be able to use... Increase the capacity, yeah, in other yeah, words. Yeah, definitely, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, okay, that's good. And again, coming back to any sort of resistances, do, do you find that architects want to know more about the, the technology before they'll include it in a, in a building's design? Yes, definitely, yeah. As I say, if they don't know anything about the technology, then they're not going to want to push it into the properties mm. because they're not going to want to be able to look daft in a way. Yeah, that makes sense. Now, just staying on the subject of, of residential, when we were talking off camera, I was um, very surprised to learn that if you if if you want to have energy savings in terms of electricity, you don't necessarily need to have the solar panels, do you? No. You 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 can do this by way of um, converting. Uh, cheap electricity from low tariff times yes. into into stored electricity, I presume. Yeah. Is, that, is that right? That's right, yes. Yeah. So, if, for example, if you lived in a thatched cottage, you couldn't put solar panels on your roof because obviously it's made of it's made of straw, hay. So you'd, you can have an inverter or a hybrid or a battery charger alongside a battery system. So then you can charge off of your cheap electricity tariff, either at night time or in the daytime, and then use the electricity that's stored in the batteries when you come home from work or throughout the day if, you're, if, you, if you don't go to work and you're at home all day. And, and you're not going to pay any peak rates, are you? No, you're not, no. That, 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 that's really interesting. I mean, again, I come back to this business of resistance or question about sort of new technologies. I mean, you, you've opened my eyes this morning to something new there with that particular um, sort of remedy for, for, for cost saving. How on earth do you get this over to people so that you, you can increase the volume of what you're doing and, I, I suppose, help the climate at the same time? I don't know. How, I don't know how you get that over to people in in, in we volume. We do. So we do a lot of. Um, we now offer free training for the installers, so that the installers are competent in installing our equipment, so they know what they they so they know what they're doing, so that then that makes the homeowner more competent and confident in what they're getting is going to be doing what what we're saying it does, um, and then market marketing like what Wen Yan does for the company now. Yes. On top of the saving, also now people start generate money so like for example for my house i installed in february and from february until now um, you know uh, besides i use all the energy generated 
from my solar panel, from the battery storage. And also on top of it, I make over 500 pound already. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you can also make money because the, throughout so the day. This is selling the excess electricity into back the to grid. The grid. Yeah. yeah. So you're not just, you know, saving money. Also, you can make money as well. So a lot of people now, when they see these kind of benefits, then they realize, you know, it, it, it's very attractive. Okay, so um, just to finish off in this first half of the uh, program today, when you say, um, okay, we're, we're getting the idea over to people, who is it that's getting that idea over to the general public? Is it, is it the building supplier, uh, you know, the material supplier that's now starting to stock these problem, uh, 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 products? Is it a, is it a, a, a wholesaler of building materials? Is it a, a, a firm of electricians? Is it a, a firm of you, you know, consultants? I'm, I'm not quite sure where, where one would go. If I suddenly decided this morning I wanted solar power, where, where would yeah. I go? Um, if for the end user, I guess a lot of end users nowadays, they, they, they use the internet. So they're looking on the internet or they're going on the TV and watching property programs to find out where they can find this information from. Other times it's the installer that will come to your house. You want solar panels, you want battery storage. They'll come to you and they'll say, well, we, we can install this product or this product, this manufacturer, this manufacturer. So I do feel that there needs to be more marketing more availability so that end users can they can choose what they want to have instead of being told by the installer or by the wholesaler okay well in this first half of the show we've talked about how we get the solar power two sources one from the sun and one from the national grid anyway at off peak times um after the break i want to talk to you about how we root that power and how we get it into our homes to do something useful. So join me again after the break and we'll be asking Wen Yan and Emma more of your queries, questions and getting them to impart their knowledge on the subject. Welcome back to part two of Property Matters. And I'm joined by Wen Yan Sharp and Emma Dutton, who are from Solax Power UK, experts in renewable energy technology. So um, we've talked about um, disturbing our roofs, how much that's going to be a problem, how much it's not going to be a problem. We're, talk we're talking about now bringing energy into the house. That's fine. So we're on the top floor of the house. We've got a lot of wires coming off the roof. Where do they go next? So you're, there's quite a few options, to be honest. Again, you'd have to pick, a, pick an installer to talk you through what you want in your property. There's a lot of people that don't want to see cables stuck on the, on the walls anywhere. So you've got a couple of options. You can put your inverter in the, off from your solar panels, have the wires going into your loft. Then you'd have an inverter in your loft. You'd need to cut, take a cable from your consumer unit, which is usually on the ground floor, either in trunking inside the house if there's a route to get up there, or you could go from the outside of the property in conduit that blends in with the the the, the, the architecture of the yeah, building, sure. so to speak. So black conduit, white conduit, whichever one you want to choose, up into the loft space on the outside. And then obviously all your different devices that you need, your safety equipment, your DC isolators and AC isolators. And would that be with the one contractor? Uh, so usually one, one installation company would probably have um, a guy that will work on the roof. It'd have an electrician. The electrician would probably have an apprentice with them to, to do all the little, the, the smaller tasks that, that when, the, when the installer and the electrician is connecting everything up, so to speak. Okay. Now, um, how involved do you, does your um, uh, current electric supplier get involved in all this because presumably you're going to be tampering with his supply into the building. So there's, uh, again, there's quite a few routes. The G98 route is where you have a, an, an installation that's 3.68 and under. 
So you can install everything first. I'm going to stop you right Sorry. there. So a, a, a G what? G98. What's a G98? So G98 is where your installation is 3.6 kilowatt, 3.68 kilowatts and under. So the DNO, your electricity company, will allow you to put on your property without notifying them first. So you can your installer can put 3.6 kilowatts of solar panels on your roof. You could either have a string inverter to go with that to convert their DC power into AC power, or you could have a hybrid system that would then have a battery storage connected to it. So you'd use the solar power, the, the energy that's converted from the solar panels will be ch changed to AC for your property. Wow. Any excess power then goes to your battery. And then any extra, once your battery is full, can then go back to the grid. Okay. And, and who arranges that commercial transaction between you and the grid? It's usually the, your installer will do all of that for you. They'll, they'll fill out your forms, but you as the home, home owner have to inform whoever you pay your bill to, Octopus, Eon, somebody like that, to let them know that you've had it installed. And then they'll suggest a tariff that's best for your property for whatever you've got installed. Okay. Now, we, we, we've talked about a couple of things there. Um, inverters, yeah? Yeah. And we've talked about batteries. Yes. Now, we're not talking about a couple of little Duracells, are we? We're talking about something... Quite yes. substantial, are we? Where, where does that have to go? Before last year, you could install it in your loft. So you could have your inverter can go in the loft, your battery storage can go in the loft. There's now a new guideline out that's uh, PAS 63100, I think it's called. And that has stated that the loft must be the last option for your battery storage. However, we live in the UK. There's lots of different houses that haven't got anywhere outside that you can put the battery systems in. So your installer will do you a risk assessment to see which is the best place. If okay. it's got to go in the loft, then maybe they'll take some tiles out, put vent tiles in and build you a fireproof enclosure to, to keep that battery storage system in. Okay, I, I'm just thinking what I keep seeing in the news about these electric scooters and things exploding. I'm not. I, I just wonder about whether how comfortable I'd feel about a battery in the. Yeah, in, it's, in the di roof. it's different technology. So um, there's lots of companies out there that will use nickel for their batteries, but the better technology is the LiPo4 technology, and that doesn't actually combust. And nowadays, the the equipment is that is that good that once even if the, there was something wrong with the batteries, let's just say that it was going to get up to a certain temperature, the equipment that's connected and controlling those batteries will just go into fault mode and switch everything off. And then it would send the customer an alert either through the app or on the screen. Okay. Now, look, let, let's just talk about something very practical. And I'm, I, I'm guessing uh, that when you're marketing these products it's something that comes up all the time especially in the uk i mean we're not in the caribbean or anything are we so um sunshine's a bit of a rare commodity isn't it how can i feel sure that i'm going to have enough sunshine to drive what my home needs well these days solar panels not based on the sunshine anymore it's on the lighting and also if you have battery storage more these days, I think people drive towards and you have uh, better returns if you have battery storages. Mm -hmm. So you can charge from um, cheap tariff and then use it at peak. And also, if you have leftovers, then you can sell back to the grid. Right. And also for the battery storage, if you limited the space in the house, you can even install outdoors because of the new technologies, there's a heated element inside the unit. So, and also it's portable. So if you move in house, you don't need to worry about, oh, I can't take with me. You can always take with you as well. Okay. Now, when you say this, we've got two different methods of getting the electricity. One is buying it at a cheap rate and, and storing it. The other is coming from the solar panels. Does that work jointly? Can 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 you, work jointly? Yes. You can have both systems. You can have both systems. Yeah, in my house, I have both systems. So when the sun comes out, it automatically the generate power from solar panel. So the solar panel, will, whatever I need to use in the house, that's the first uh, preference. And then if my house only needs say two hundred watts or something very little, then it's filling up the battery. Now, once the battery is full, then it goes sells into the grid. Okay. Now, you, you just mentioned a minute or two ago, so you don't necessarily need sunshine. Mm -hmm. 
I, I'm, I'm a bit lost now. So what, 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 what does the solar panel rely on? On the light. Yeah, so the so solar panels are a lot better than they used to be. So, so the solar panels will now work in just daylight. So if your house is self-facing, it is better to have your house self-facing so that you'll produce more energy from the sun. But you can have southeast, you could have an east-facing roof, a west-facing roof where you're not getting much sunshine, but you've got you've got daylight. So the daylight helps to the solar panels to generate the DC power, which is then converted to the AC power. So, so is that just a question of um, the the sensitivity of the panels? Yes, and what they're made of. And as that's well. improved. Yes. Yeah. And and where has that techn technology come from? Has it come? Has it come, sort of from 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 China? Has it come from, perhaps you know the hotter parts of America? Or, or, or where where's it been? So um, as I said, we don't make solar panels. So as far as I'm aware, the companies that do make the solar panels, they're always working on innovative innovative project projects that will make the the elements of the solar panel be better equipped to harness that sunlight okay and just with anything that's made with a, a presumably a fairly fragile material um in extreme weather conditions would they be liable to crack or to to frost or to are there any danger points with these these panels not that i'm aware of now with the newer panels obviously the newer panels are a lot bigger as well so they can soak in more sunlight right obviously with the bad weather that you can get in the um, in the UK, especially up north, then your solar panels will freeze. But as the day goes on and the sun warms the panels up, the frost, the, the ice on the panels will melt, and then the panels will continue to generate. Are you suggesting there's a northwest divide, a north-south <laughs> divide here? <right? laughs> there's definitely more sunshine down south. So, yes. Oh, I wish you'd show us where it is. I think we've had the coldest summer for about 15 yeah, years. Yeah, and the wettest, we? yes. <laughs> and the wettest. Okay, well, that, that's all, all, all very interesting. Now, um, just a final question on, 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 the, on these panels. Um, are most of the panels uh, imported or do we make them here in the UK? Um, that I'm not sure of, to be honest. Um, they're probably imported. Um, there may be some companies here that will put the put the materials together and make the frames up, so they might right. they might be made here as well. Okay, so Again, we dual process. Yeah, yeah, we don't make the panels, so majority manufacturers. Yeah, um, yeah, they're based in China. I would say, yeah, like for our products, you know, inverters, battery storages, of an at least ninety percent brand in the UK market are made overseas, especially in China. And, but um, most of them, they don't have present in the UK. So for, like for ourselves, we have our sales force, we have after sales technical uh, engineers, you know, people like Emma will go out on site. If you have an issue, they will go to see for you, you know. So yeah, take, these days, you know, they're talking about technology, you have to have the confidence. Just, um... Just finally for this show, um, when I talk to people about electric cars, they say, well, actually, it's not that good for the climate because it costs so much in terms of um, carbon footprint to manufacture the batteries and the, and the extra parts for the car to carry the batteries and things like that, that actually netting off the, the, the real value is probably um, coming down to nothing. And also when the disposal time comes for these vehicles, the disposal of batteries and the disposal of the materials that they're made of can cause problems. Um, are, are we sure that utilising um, solar energy and putting it into huge batteries is not going to have the same effect, an almost negative effect, or is it really going to benefit climate change? It's definitely going to benefit climate change. Um, we, our company, um, obviously we've got the wee levy and everything in the UK. We will take our equipment back. We'll, re we'll eventually be able to recycle it and to make it into new equipment. So that again, that's going to off offset carbon footprints. When Jan's just uh, started to do uh, where you buy our products, we'll plant a tree on your behalf. And when you can tell you a little bit more yeah. about that. So you know, if you help us to, you know, uh, promote our products and you know 
um, let people know how you um, find about our products and we'll send us the details. We'll plant a tree in Madagascar for you. Okay. Well, there, there you are. You can you can plant a tree for property two B. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Okay, ladies. Thank you very much for um, taking part in this first show on this subject. Um, we'll be filming another show very shortly, and we'll delve a little bit deeper into your subject. Thank, thank you, you both for coming on today. Thank, thank you, you for, for thank you for watching, and join me next time on Property Matters.